Grade 7 math number 11.3b use multiple samples to compare populations. Many different random samples are possible for any given population, and their measures of center can vary. If we use multiple samples, it'll give us an idea of the reliability of our inferences, those are our conclusions or our predictions. So we said before, for a box and whisker plot, we've got our lowest value here on the left and our greatest value here on the right. The size of the box is called the interquartile range. The median is right in the center. So the lower quartile, Q1, is the average number between uh, the median and the lowest value. Okay, It's the average of the lowest half of the numbers. And then the upper quartile, the Q3, is the average of the upper half values. See? And then we have our median, our middle number. That's Q2. Kind of looks like a cat or an animal with whiskers, doesn't it? Now, if you're completely confused, I would, go, and you don't know what I'm talking about at all, I would go back to um, this portfolio, this, pro, this uh, playlist, to 10.2b or to 11.2a, b, or c, and I think especially 11.2c, I really talk about box and whisker plots, then you can understand them a little bit more before seeing this one. I'm kind of wrapping up in, in this video. All right, so for the mean absolute deviation, which we talked about in the last video at great length, what we do is we find each absolute difference between the data values and then we get the average of the values. So this is what it means. Let's say this is the, uh, the data that we came up with, okay? Like someone volunteers three hours, someone volunteers four hours, and someone volunteers five hours. We total them up and get a 12, and then to get the average, we divide by how many numbers we added up, three. So 12 divided by three would be four, so four is the average. So what we do now is we get the absolute difference. So remember what absolute value is? It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It's just how far away from it is from zero. So we do three take away four, and we get a one. Now, if it wasn't absolute value, that would be a negative one, wouldn't it? Because we're taking four away from a three and going below zero. But this is absolute value, so the difference is one. The difference between four and four is zero, and the difference between five and four is one. Now, we add these up and get the average of these values, see? So we found the absolute differences between the data values and the average. Now we're going to get the average of these. So there's three digits that total two. So to get the average, we divide the two by three, and we get 0.66 as a repeating decimal. That is the MAD. That's the mean absolute deviation, OK? So we got an average. Then we got the absolute difference of the averages and the values. Then we added the differences, and then we got their average, OK? All right, so 257th graders and 250th graders were asked how many hours they volunteer each month. Random samples of 10 7th graders and 10 11th graders were plotted on a box and whisker plot. Now, by using the box and whisker plots, we can see the data more clearly, especially in regard to the medians, the centers, OK? So this is what we came up with. And this is the information we got. The low end of 7th grade is 4 on this end of the whisker, but for 11th grade, it was 5. And the high end was 15 for 7th grade, but 17 for 11th grade. We want to see who volunteers more. Now, we can see the medians are different. Here it's 9, and here it's 11, right? And these are the months of volunteer, the hours they do in one month of volunteer work. See? Now, because the large overlap in values right here, that the boxes are like right on top of each other, it's hard to see who volunteers more exactly, OK? We can look at the shape of the boxes, and they're pretty much the same. The centers, we can see the seventh grade is lower, and the eleventh grade is higher, but there's more variation. And if you compare the spreads, we can see the eleventh grade has a little bit more of a spread, but see it's shorter here and longer here. So to make an inference for the entire population, we should look at how the medians vary. So then we make a box and whisker plot for the medians. That really makes it stand out. See? Look at the difference there. The medians vary less than the actual data because we've honed in. We were getting, we got information, and then we got information from the information, so we're getting even tighter in our information. Half the seventh grade medians are within the nine, and half of the eleventh grades are within the eleven. So we can see that these middles barely overlap here, see? They're hardly touching each other. It's not like over here where both boxes were on top of each other. Here they're barely touching each other. So we can see from these, the distribution of the medians that the 11th graders volunteer more than the 7th graders, see? See how it helped doing 
um, a second plot of just the medians. That really made it stick out who did more, huh? All right, we're going to talk about proportions next. I hope that this was really helpful. And I hope you understand what the mean absolute deviation is now, okay? And I'll see you next video. Bye.